there have been a ton of great recurring actors across the Trek franchise, and I've narrowed these down to my... This has been the hardest of these best five worst fives to pick favorites in yet. Even when it comes to the worst in the list, it's not because the actor or actress didn't generally give their best performance, but mainly because of bad writing and direction. At fifth worst, Waxana Troy. I'm sorry, but I have to do this. While Majel Barrett Roddenberry, the mother of Star Trek, had some solid and iconic roles in the franchise, for the most part, the character of Waxana Troy was dusted off and trotted out about once a season whenever the writers seemingly had few ideas. There's some notable exceptions like TNG's Half a Life and Dark Page, where she's wonderfully written into the script. Then there's episodes like Manhunt that actually make Spock's brain look good. However, next week's Best 5 Worst 5 will continue reviewing Star Trek fashions with the Waxana Troy collection. Number 4. Grey Tall. I'm really sad to have to put this character here, but the writers just ran this one over and then backed up the bus a few more times. I appreciate the inclusivity Grey brings to Trek, but in the end, it felt like the producers of the show were just trying to tick off the non-binary box without giving the character anything meaningful to do. We're first introduced to Grey as Tall's previous host before Adira, which was fine. Then we see them as a hologram for no apparently good reason in Discovery's third season finale, which seemed weird, but was okay. Headed into season four, there was a lot of hype and build up to the character gaining a new synthetic body similar to Picard's. But there's nothing for Grey to do but hang out with Adira for just a few minutes of screen time over the next few episodes. We've seen this actor act to a satisfactory level until we got to the episode Stormy Weather, where I guess Jonathan Frakes in the director's chair was okay with the multiple mediocre line deliveries. To cap it all off, in the next episode, he's shipped off to become a guardian of the Trill symbiont pools that Sisko once described as the most boring job in the galaxy. Grey deserved better than this, Disco writers. Number three, Gabrielle Burnham. A mom who doesn't show an ounce of compassion for her daughter until their very last on-screen moment. This temporal scientist turned Navarre warrior nun is only outstripped in the terrible parent category by probably Annika Hansen's parents. For me, her appearance in season two of Discovery was when the season completely started to fall apart. Then out of nowhere, to bring her back 900 years in the future as a Kawat Malat sister seemed a baffling turn of events, where, while her end goals are noble, in her role as Michael's counsel, she turns the whole thing back on her. Maybe a little bit of that absolute candor up front before you attack your defendant. Michael certainly didn't have it easy losing her parents, then having to deal with Sarek, and then this shell of her lost mother later in life. Number two, Alexander Rozhenko. While the first time we're introduced to the character as a child, his mother has just died. And this heartbreaking moment is sadly the best we did for the character. He spends his youth not living up to his father's expectations. Just when you think he's found his own path and Worf has made peace with the idea that his son will never be a great warrior, he joins the Klingon Defense Force for some reason. Alexander's teenage warrior years aren't much better. He's a goofy fool doing this to somehow make his father mad. And the worst recurring character in Trek? Maj Kala. The embodiment of one of the least interesting villain races in Trek. A primitive, warlike species that only gained space travel by stealing it. His only real line set across his appearances is that he won't be talked to by a woman. He leaves Voyager easy avenues of escape at every encounter, and is generally the worst recurring villain in Trek. The only thing worth watching him for is his interactions with Seska. I had to give more than an honorable mention because there are so many great recurring characters, and do six best today. Number six, Sarek. Being played by three actors over more than 50 years of Star Trek, Sarek is one of the most nuanced and fleshed out characters on this list, all the while remaining a bit of a mystery. He's got the heartless Vulcan thing going on, but at the same time has chosen to take multiple human wives, which cost him a great deal of respect on his homeworld. While he clearly struggled to be the father most of his children needed, he excelled in Federation diplomacy. The original Sarek, Mark Leonard, is himself a staple in the franchise, playing multiple wonderful roles. Number 5. 
broccoli. Even when a good chunk of the episodes that feature Reg Barkley are poorly written time wasters, Dwight Schultz's performance has so many different facets, and the man can hit any emotion and convey something completely different in the next scene. Bringing him to Voyager and tying us back to the Alpha Quadrant randomly was a nice touch. He's the character that gives us probably the best look at mental health in the franchise. Number 4. Q Q has had quite a mixed bag of bad and good episodes in Trek, but John Delancey always brings an A-game performance. There are few recurring characters more iconic than this godlike trickster with a fascination for Federation Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Sometimes testing your limits and sometimes giving you a leg up to unpleasant truths. You never know what he's really up to when he shows up. Number 3. Gul Dukat You knew there was no way Mark Lamo would not make this list for his most noted role in Deep Space Nine. While every character he's played in Trek has been interesting, no recurring character in Trek is quite like him. In his first few seasons of appearances, you actually get the sense he's not a bad guy. He helps Sisko on multiple occasions even when he doesn't have to. It's not till he commits Cardassia to joining the Dominion that you wipe away the charismatic charm and see him for what he really is, a totalitarian dictator that actually believes his own lies. Gul Dukat is likely just the best villain across Trek. Number 2. The Many Faces of Jeffrey Combs If this list was best recurring actor, I think Mr. Combs would win. Arguably, his best role is Weyoun, but I couldn't put this man on this list without mentioning just how talented he is. If they ever bring back short treks, I want a holodeck where all the characters he's ever played are talking to each other. Weyoun can go from bubbly to quietly terrifying in a matter of moments. Brunt's the capitalist you love to hate. Shran is a strong, confident military leader with an impeccable code of honor and with a few other additions, has portrayed more different characters than any other actor across the franchise. A delight to watch, no matter what face he's putting on. And the best recurring character in all of Trek? Guinan. While her character doesn't require the acting range of some of the other entries on this list, it doesn't mean Whoopi can't produce. This character seems to be the embodiment of everything Star Trek stands for. She's a listener that always has the right words for people even when they don't know they needed to hear anything. She speaks softly, but isn't afraid to fight if it's necessary. Even after coming back in a movie and Star Trek Picard, she's this long-lived being that's got a ton of mysterious backstory surrounding her. I imagine that this season of Picard are the dealings she and Q had centuries ago. Why do Alorians only age if they choose to, though? Who's your favorite recurring actor in Star Trek? <laughs>